chairwoman of the Democratic Party is finding herself the target of some particularly vicious backstabbing through the use of unnamed sources in the Washington way. Around the table, media and politics strategist Tara Wall, Crossfire co-host Newt Gingrich, Mark Lamont Hill of HuffPost Live, and Democratic strategist Donna Brazile. So Politico did a piece about Democrats' turn on Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Uh, in the end, uh, the conclusion was basically being DNC chair is a major political opportunity. The knock on Wasserman Schultz isn't that she's taking advantage of these relationships, but that she appears to be planning her personal political rise while also trying to lead the party. Who would have thought it? A politician plotting their own <laughs> political rise while in another job. I was stunned. I, 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 I'll tell you what stunned me was the the attack was, I thought, pretty vicious in Washington standards. And it was that old woman thing. She wants us to pay for her clothes, so it makes it look petty. Which wasn't true, by the way. Look, the last chair of the Democratic Party, Tim Kaine, went on to be United States Senator. Previous chair, Chair McCullough, now the governor of Virginia. And, of George course, Bush. I can talk about, you know, uh, Ed Rendell, former mayor, governor of Pennsylvania. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious. Uh, what I didn't like about the article, of course, is not just the timing, but the, 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 the nature of the tax, the personal tax. Look, I, I'm vice chair of the party, so I, and I turned the gavel over to Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She's phenomenal job in reducing the deficit. We have no deficit now. She took over a party that had a deficit. Meaning the party doesn't. The, the, the Democratic National Committee doesn't have a deficit. Uh, she has expanded our digital program. She has revamped old programs. She has been so able why, to So what's, what's her big sin here? Big sin? Well, what did she do to deserve this big hit? Well, you, you, you live and breathe in Washington, D.C., and you don't have a political enemy out there, somebody who's willing to attack Lots of you. them. They, they, they will. The White House. Well, I think but she's goes, done a great job. Yeah, I, I think this goes beyond um, political enemies. I think it's clear that there is a disconnect between Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the White House, uh, no matter who says it. I think it's clear that they've distanced themselves in some ways um, from the DNC chair, and I think for, for a number of reasons, um, uh, I think her leadership probably has been called into questions many times, and certainly I don't have as all the insight that Donna has, but I think to say, you know, from, from a fundraising standpoint to speak, you know, the RNC outraises the DNC. They have consistently outraised the DNC. So I think there's some legitimate concerns with people who probably have some angst. I think but the they're White not House saying is, she hasn't raised enough money. Well, right. They're but saying I think, she wants clothes and she's a prima donna and which she's... Is, but, but, we saw the same thing with Sarah Palin. We see the same thing now. It's, off, it's often a gender-based assault, and that's what I find so troublesome about this. Might there be critiques of Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Perhaps, but ultimately she's been a great leader. It's not gender-based because I would, I would argue, I, I agree there are issues where it's gender-based, but in this case, there was a starkly different relationship with Tim Kaine and the White House and George Bush and, and, and the RNC oh, chairman. It's, it's, there, staff, it's a leader. It's, it's there's a, President, these are staffers, these are those staffers, these are staffers who are like, right, right, that's that, telling that. them that staffers are so yeah. willing to. But it's staffers and it's still people in this White House. Right, or it could just be her time. I mean, it's also, yeah. there's an expiration date. Hang on, let me get new to explain the whole thing to us. Well, first of all, it's fair to say that Reince Priebus in August raised 40% more than Debbie Wasserman Schultz did. So there's a certain amount of, of money difference. But there are a couple of big things here. One, she, nobody in the White House staff can say, gee, uh, our Syria policy is not working, our Iraq policy is not working, our Ukraine policy is not working, our health care policy is not working, our economy policy is not working. I guess it's the president's fault. So instead they say, we're in real trouble, which they are. It must be a scapegoat. She's a pretty good scapegoat. But what's amazing is, you know, she could leave with one phone call. I mean, she serves at the president's approval. Yes. Now, here's a president who has red lines he can't meet in Syria, red lines he can't meet in Iraq, red lines he can't meet in Ukraine. He apparently can't meet a red line with his own DNC chair. I mean, all he's got to do, if he's unhappy, but how then would, he's, would it be to do that in, 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 right now? Well, it would be nice. If, if you're a Democrat and you wake up, having been a candidate in bad years in 74 and 76 in Georgia, I can tell you, you wake up and your headline this morning is your party chair maybe should be fired because she wants to buy expensive clothing. That, that doesn't move. Kind of but kind of conversation it, but, and, and story. No, it, look, she leads a very diverse party from Elizabeth Warren to Joe Manchin, a, a conservative United States senator, to Jerry Brown and soon Anthony Brown a governor of Maryland. She leads a very diverse party. And yes, there will be tensions, but you know, at the end of the day, 
Debbie's job is to go out there and help Democrats win, and that's what And I think that's what's going to be telling at the end of the day. So first of all, the other to, to pick up on part of that point is it is also problematic when you don't when you're not in regular strategy sessions with the White House with the president, and and in a way that she's admitted she isn't on a regular basis. Yeah, that's but problematic. Not, number two, be, number two. Let me finish my thought. Number two is uh, when it comes to midterms. I think at the end of the day that will be the most telling case uh, when we when we, and we see the shifts already that are in Republicans' favor. Uh, you know, it's still there's still a lot of time between now and then. But I think that that's... I think that's going to be a very telling uh, for, 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 from, a, from a White House standpoint. <laughs> I thought you guys would have a quick little thing to say and we'd move on. Okay, now we're moving on. I want it because I, I have been noticing the ads here in Maryland, the Senate race, in a congressional race in Virginia. Uh, now we're seeing some others around. I want to just play some quick uh, bites from some ads and then ask you something on the other side. Rick Scott wants to take away a woman's right to choose. Congressman Gardner led a crusade that would make birth control illegal and sponsored a bill to make abortion a felony. Hogan opposes a woman's right to choose. He wants to ban abortions even in cases of rape and incest. Barbara Comstock even voted with right-wing Republicans to require women seeking an abortion to undergo transvaginal ultrasounds. That's all I need to know. All, all Democratic ads all aimed at Republicans, all about social issues. You know, I didn't know that abortion was on anybody's, when you ask it's voters, not. it's not. It's Why not. are they doing it? They have nothing left. Look, the Wall Street, oh, Journal, wow. <laughs> the, Wall, the Wall Street Journal reported this week that Republicans now lead among white women by 48 to 40. Now, that is, in a congressional year, that is a catastrophic number for the Democratic Party. And so... The same consultants file back to the same old ads to try to make the same case, and it's not going to work. The fact is, if you go to the average woman and you say, tell me where this is on your list. It's not even on the I mean, look at Wendy Davis, the great hope in Texas. Mm -hmm. And look what, you know, the fact is women care about the economy, they care about jobs, they care about security, they care about education. There are a ton of issues they care about. This is a long way down on that list. And, and let me just say this. Newsflash. We have not done well with white women in previous election cycles. We've done well with women of color, and we've won the gender gap because we have a well, broad single and white diverse. Women, Democrats single Democrats. white women. But look, the truth is, is that we are talking about equal pay. We're talking about white. raising minimum wage. And the reason why single these are these, these, right these the, single white women is about dead even right now. And you know what? We'll get them back. Don't worry. Uh, here, here's the reason why these this is very important is because Republicans are the ultimate hypocrites when it comes to uh, birth control and reproductive rights. They have supported the personhood amendment. They tried to shut down the government on health care, which uh, allowed contraceptions. And now they're saying, we support birth control over the counter. We don't I mean, mind you having birth this. control. I, I, I think, think, I think, that's and that's, and that's is why this think, is what this I is think, about. This isn't is a, is a Hail Mary in the 12th is, hour. This, this is a response to Republicans attempting to move toward the center ostensibly for uh, midterm election purposes to seem more reasonable on this issue. But when you accompany this with the Pay to Check Fairness Act, which was, which was just shut down, you realize that women really need to be remi not reminded, but women are being encouraged by the Democratic Party to vote these issues. Come on, these are, look, yeah. it's, I think it's, I think it's unfortunate when any candidate on either side of the aisle uses divisive ads like this to divide groups like women Wait, who should can't. and pander to women <laughs> who should know better. When women, when everyday women are not sitting at the table talking about the government taking away birth oh, control, abortion, worry. the top ten issues. Look, look, this is what Republicans should do in these cases when this, these come up. These are number one. These are these are these are groups that are pushing these issues. These candidates should be talking about what matters to women. To, to go to news point, and this is my well, this would be my recommendation for from a media perspective. The optics and everything for. Republicans Republicans is to take the fact that 55 percent of all women right now disapprove of the job that the president is doing. So you start with that and tell them why they disapprove. The and, and it has it nothing to do with the women's issues because they have abortion. no alternative to, to criticizing President Obama. That's all you talk about. Okay, so I told you not to talk so much about <laughs> you, Schultz people. Next time you'll listen to me. Uh, we got to go. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you. Um, Tara Wall, Mark Lamont Hill, Newt Gingrich, Donna Brazil. Come back or stay here. We'll continue. We'll keep the conversation. Next up, an 87-year-old ex-governor, ex-con, newly wed with a baby, wants another shot.